Hi, welcome to our channel True Up. With the escalation of the crisis between Russia and Ukraine, the indiscriminate sanctions imposed on the Russian market by technology businesses in the United States and its associated nations and regions have alarmed talents in our Chinese technology industry. We all know that the United States wielding the stick of sanctions and enforcing long-arm jurisdiction are not new challenges in today's international community, and they should not be unexpected. It does not just target nations involved in geopolitical confrontations with the US, such as Russia. American allies are also targeted when necessary. The discovery of the US and its allies' technology giants' indiscriminate sanctions on Russia, from politicians to the general public, from public utilities to the mass market, does not lend itself well to the phrase technical self-reliance. Historically, Russia has not lost its autonomous scientific and technical research and development capabilities. It has a longer history of accumulation in the field of major fundamental technical components than China. So, how should we assess the global effect of American technological behemoths? And how do you define actual technical autonomy? How can we move from passive to active in the core and important scientific and technical sectors to actualize the independent substitute? Following the outbreak of the conflict, the United States imposed official sanctions for the first time, which primarily included ban measures led by BIS, Bureau of Industry and Security of the United States Department of Commerce, these were aimed at Russian IT, telecommunications, defense, and aviation sectors, and further expanded the control categories. Because of the Huawei issue, the Chinese public was already aware of the precautions. Because of the ban's long-arm character, U.S. and non-U.S. chip and hardware firms such as Intel, TSMC, Hewlett-Packard, Ericsson, and others have forced to cease doing business in Russia. Then, at the request of Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Fedorov, basic software corporations such as Oracle, Oracle, and SAP declared an independent choice to stop doing business in Russia. Daily services that Russians rely on, such as Google Pay, have also been disrupted one after the other. As a result, the world has no really business-neutral IT titans. In today's culture, technology businesses, particularly technological giants and low-level technology providers with a dominant position, are not merely commercial enterprises, but have become the cornerstone of social functioning, resulting in widespread attention. The success of American technology corporations in recent decades has resulted in many nations' information, banking, transportation, and even security systems being run on platforms provided by American commercial titans. The Russians who are waiting in lengthy lines, as well as the energy pillar corporations who have built their systems on the Oracle database, which is causing problems for the Russian government, understand what this publicity implies. Another fact that is more thoroughly exposed in these indiscriminate sanctions against Russia is that when the national interests and strategies of the United States conflict with the public attributes derived from technology behemoths, the latter will instinctively or automatically choose the former. Previously, when people said software defines the world and the United States defines software, it was more with admiration and recognition for American technological development, but today's increasingly obvious facts show that the United States in the United States defines software refers to the United States. National security and interests These tech titans' judgments are influenced not by their own political preferences or individual opinions on an event, but by the political, economic, military, and technical hegemony that has long existed in the United States in order to consolidate its absolute power. The multiple omnidirectional long-arm jurisdiction statutes and punishments devised by the dominant stance have been institutionalized. For a long time, this system controlled by American technology corporations has been obscured by globalization and successful business tales. Many Chinese technology companies, particularly those in the internet and venture capital circles, are only concerned with roughly 10 to 15 percent of these software-based fields. The year's tale high market capitalization, strong returns, and the impact of technology on people's lives. However, the collusion between these internet titans and the U.S. government has been disregarded or forgotten, whether purposefully or unwittingly. Simultaneously, Russia has stepped up its official-led domestic process in recent years, introducing a number of laws and regulations, such as Russia's autonomous and controlled cyberspace security system, to promote Russia's own Baikal processor chips, Elbrus processors, based on the popularity of Linux's Astra Astra operating system, and so on. However, these formal Russian-led technological autonomy initiatives are no longer in place. Neither effectively addressed the issue. Prior to this, China had its own database that was sponsored by government finances, but the concepts did not depart from the technical principles established by Oracle for more than 30 years. Even if there is a breakthrough in local performance, it will only be comparable to select Russian locally made rival items. Overall, it is still no match for a massive ecological product that has been mature for 30 years. 
The difference between China and Russia, however, is that China has a far larger and more complex market. With the fast development of consumer internet in China, China has established a new IT environment that is radically different from the one that existed when Oracle was founded in the United States, which was dominated by military and enterprise-level applications. The new path that evolved from the DIOE process meets the demands of security and cost-effectiveness in high-end currency scenarios as well as the digitization of diverse sectors. Domestic cloud manufacturers and the cloud computing industry have also thrived, and unlike the lag that China had when database and other technologies were originally established, cloud technology has become a rivalry between China and international nations that began virtually simultaneously. In addition to Alibaba Cloud, Tencent, Huawei, Kingsoft, and Baidu have entered the cloud computing and cloud technology industry battle. From 2012 to 2013, Alibaba said goodbye to the IOE mechanism. Alibaba has a cloud database and a self-developed database in this procedure, and utilize this to begin redefining cloud operating systems, processors, and other technical sectors. Today, Alibaba Cloud offers the largest database products in China, including relational databases, analytical databases, NoSQL databases, and associated services and tools. PolarDB X and AnalyticDB, a cloud-native data warehouse, handled more than 100 million orders during double 11. 100,000 individuals could check the real-time status of parcels at the same time, and played a critical role in the delivery of anti-epidemic goods this year. OceanBase, a self-developed database in the IOE process, outperforms traditional offerings in terms of performance. OceanBase exceeded Oracle for the first time in 2019, according to the database benchmark TPCC of the World Cup in the database field, and has since broken records on a regular basis. Its performance rating has surpassed 100 million. The temperature hit 707 million TPMC. In my opinion, the necessity for technical iteration has led to breakthroughs in the stable IOE cage controlled by American interests, owing to China's own larger and more complicated technological application scenarios, while many Chinese technology enterprises valiantly continue to innovate. Taking use of this chance, I completely revamped my route in a new scene. This has always been the most difficult journey, and it will only get worse. Looking at today's U.S. technology corporations' sanctions against Russia, it is clear that they are ready to politicize themselves and grow their power. These individuals should also be aware that infrastructure technology behemoths are the targets of sanctions. It refers to the whole public. No one can be alone when the United States uses these global monopoly platforms to produce new international pariahs. This indiscriminate assault should be enough to dispel any delusions. Looking at Russia today and the path China is going, everyone should be aware of one thing, never allow our country's finest brains to enhance technology just by according to the norms imposed by American corporations, even if they are regarded with skepticism. It's difficult, but we don't have a choice if we want to be the definers of new issues. Thanks for watching our video. We would appreciate it if you subscribed our channel and gave us a thumb. See you.